the day of colorful champions. Competition has topped every sport with players of amazing skill. But it's the game with speed, thrills, and colorful champions that packs the sand. Champions of the polo field. Yesterday, an imported sport enjoyed by a few. But it had the magic ingredient. Today, the flash of the willow mallet in the hands of daring horsemen like Tommy Hitchcock, Jack Whitney, and Pete Boswick is a sight that thrills thousands. They are the kind of champions that win fans. Champions of the Cinder Path. Ten years ago, Charlie Paddock's flying feet won for him the title of the world's fastest human. But even then, a dusky Ohio lad was learning all that Charlie knew about running and dreaming of the day when he could add his bit. He did. Today gives us Jesse Owens, the Buckeye Bullet, the sprint phenomenon of the age. Jesse Owens, the 1936 Olympic champion and the hero of track fans throughout the world. Champions of the Diamond. No champion in the game ever won the hearts of the fans as did Babe Ruth, the Sultan of Swat. When he came to bat, they felt the thrill that only a colorful expert can give. And from the instant the home run crack of hickory on horsehide reached their ears until the Bambino trotted across the home plate, their throat-splitting roar told the listening world that a real champion was delivering the goods. Champions of the gridiron. Twenty years ago, it was a battle of sweat, muscle, and fighting hearts. But to these ingredients, science has been added. Today, the bark of the quarterback electrifies his men into a machine of power and coordination. When the ball is snapped, they act as a team, clearing the way for a brilliant twisting dash through a broken field. And the cheers of 50,000 fans are not only for the hero of the moment, but also for the team play that can give them such champions. Champions of the turf. The steel spring tension of the thoroughbreds is caught by the fans. A moment of silence, then they're off. The moments that follow are a flash of bright silks and straining muscles, accompanied by the hoarse, pleading cheers of the fans. Some will win and some must lose, but the sport of kings still draws them like a magnet because they all win the priceless thrill of crowning a new champion. Now they're thundering down the stretch, neck and neck. It's a dead heat. No, the flag goes up. It's discovery. Discovery wins. City transportation, too, has produced some new champions, electric champions. Outstanding among them is the trolley coach. A few years ago, the first modern trolley coach rolled into service here in Salt Lake City. Since then, during the leanest years in business history, alert transit men in dozens of cities have given their patrons superior service with these modern electric vehicles. The results in terms of passenger satisfaction, public goodwill, and increased riding have indeed been gratifying. In fact, the way public attitude has changed from bristling antagonism for anything suggesting trolley to a point of rising up and demanding trolley coaches is phenomenal. In every city where trolley coaches are used, they have won and held greater support of passengers than any other transit vehicle. Direct comparisons of new vehicles of all types placed in service at the same time show that the increase in patronage is heavily in favor of this electric vehicle. Moreover, in every city where the people have had the opportunity to compare and vote for their choice, the trolley coach has won. This combination of bus and trolley car, which was called a hybrid a few years ago, has proved to be a thoroughbred. With riders, with property owners, with transit companies, the trolley coach is today's popular champion. Here is one of Cleveland's new electric fleet. Watch it draw up to the curb to take on passengers. Here, as in many new trolley coach cities, the original estimate of increased riding was greatly exceeded. As you watch these passengers walk down the aisle while the coach picks up speed, notice that there is no jerking, no wild grabbing for handholds. A smooth flow of electric power from standstill to top speed means comfort for the trolley coach rider. Hey, mister, we're in a hurry. But you don't need to pull over. We'll just swing around you and be on our way. 
The trolley coach can be maneuvered 12 feet on either side of its overhead wire, enabling it to swing briskly around parked, stalled, or slow-moving vehicles. Such agility, combined with the swift getaway and speed afforded by an unlimited supply of electric power, enables the trolley coach to maintain faster schedules in frequent stop service than any self-propelled vehicle. Successful trolley coach operation is not confined to residential routes. Here in downtown Dayton, you see it perform in traffic. As it takes on passengers, auto traffic moves on. And as it swings out again and glides down the street, there are no delays. It stays ahead of the traffic stream. Here is Professor Martin, a young scientist from Case School of Applied Science in Cleveland. Someone told him that the trolley coach was the quietest vehicle on the street, so he's checking up on them with this sensitive noise meter. He also measured the sound made by other public vehicles and private automobiles, and he found that this 40-passenger electric coach is not only far quieter than any other public vehicle, but actually as quiet as the most modern automobile. Another big reason why this champion is so popular with the fans. Here is one of Dayton's earlier models. It's still as quiet, smooth starting, and swift as the day it rolled into service several years ago, because the performance of electric motors does not weaken with age. Say, watch this. When the traffic light says go, this powerful electric champion glides right out ahead of the pack. That means a faster ride for passengers and no annoying delays for motorists. Perhaps most appreciated of all the advantages of this electric vehicle is its absolute freedom from fumes. Everywhere, passengers, merchants, and residents living on trolley coach routes are voicing high praise for this splendid comfort feature. The modern trolley coach is its own salesman. Trim streamlining makes it look as speedy as it is. It has the novelty and inviting appearance to attract new riders and it has the quietness, speed, convenience, and limousine comfort to make them regular patrons. Gleaming spick and span appearance, deep cushioned seats, splendid illumination, absolute freedom from fumes, plenty of clean, odorless electric heat evenly distributed throughout the coach assures comfort in the coldest weather. These features combine with velvet smooth electric performance to make the trolley coach a super salesman of rides. <laughs> The all-service vehicle. It operates either as a trolley coach, as shown here, or as a gas electric bus. With the end of the trolley line reached, the driver simply touches a button, and the automatic retrievers bring down the trolley poles. Then, while passengers are loading, he starts the gas electric power plant, and the all-service vehicle moves sway under its own power. For long routes running through areas of widely varying traffic density, such as those operated by Public Service of New Jersey through the cluster of small cities surrounding Newark, this versatile electric vehicle performs like a real champion. The results of their first fleet of 62, both as to increased patronage and lower operating costs, were so successful that hundreds more have been ordered. On long routes where non-trolley operation is necessary in certain sections because of city restrictions, or where, for investment reasons, non-trolley operation is desirable in the sections of low traffic density, or where a growing community offers possibilities for opening new extensions immediately off the trolley route, the economics of the all-service vehicle should be studied. In short, where the riding will support the investment, the all-service vehicle makes possible the most efficient type of routing for low-cost operation. Under its own power, as well as on the trolley, the all-service vehicle has advantages afforded only by electric drive, swift, smooth starting, fast schedules in frequent stop service, minimum engine gassing, and performance that stays young. As with the trolley coach, famous for its ease of operation and safety, the driver can start, stop, or increase or decrease the speed of the all-service vehicle without taking his hands off the steering wheel. Here is a new vehicle that has steadily been taking form on the horizon of transit development. For years, transportation men have recognized the potential economies of the diesel engine for city service. And now the diesel is teamed with electric drive. The eyes of the transit world are focused on the diesel electric bus. There is nothing new or untried about the diesel engine for transportation service. 
Here in the United States, they have proved their rugged dependability and operating economy for years in tractors, switching locomotives, and more recently in high-speed streamlined trains. In Europe, even for city transit, the diesel is in general use, but without benefit of electric drive, because the standards of operating smoothness and passenger comfort are not as high as they are in the United States. Likewise, the success of electric drive is well known. It has proved its value for the ease of operation, passenger comfort, and low maintenance on nearly 2,000 gas electric buses now in service. So in the diesel electric bus, you have two successful developments combined into a vehicle that meets American standards of performance and at the same time affords the greatest economy known in the field of the self-propelled vehicle. Watch these passengers walk down the aisle as the coach picks up speed. Observe that there is no jerking. Instead, electric drive carries the bus away with perfect smoothness. Electric drive permits the diesel to run at practically constant speed, regardless of vehicle speed, thereby minimizing engine odors and giving passengers another comfort feature which wins and holds their patronage. With electric drive, the operator controls his bus from standstill to top speed without taking his hands from the steering wheel. No clutch to operate, no gears to shift. Instead, he devotes more attention to passengers and gives them a safer, faster, smoother, and more comfortable ride. The fuel economy of the diesel, the velvety smoothness of electric drive, the principle proved in other forms of transportation. Yes, the diesel electric coach looks like a coming champion in the field of the self-propelled vehicle, and General Electric recommends it as an important advance in that field. Now let's look under the hood. Whoop, that's one on me. There isn't any hood. They have tucked this compact power plant here under the back seat. Makes more room for passengers. There's the diesel engine, and there's the new lightweight electric generator. That's right, it carries her away as smooth as velvet. That's what the passengers like. This electric transmission is the first in America expressly designed for diesel electric bus operation. Weighs 25% less than the previous drives of similar size. And here's the point of real economy. Hey, let's have some fuel going up the road about three miles. No, I'll take this one. We need only half as much. And now the modern streetcar. Before we go to Brooklyn, where the first fleet of President's conference cars is now in service, let's roll down to the nation's capital and cast a critical eye on some modern cars which approach in speed, quietness, and passenger comfort the President's conference car. Not so hard to look at, are they? And say, watch this yearling sail up Capitol Hill. Ask any Washington motorist if he still thinks all streetcars are decrepit old rattlers. <laughs> And ask this motorman if he'd rather drive a bus, or if he longed for the days when he developed his right jab with the old hand controller. Now, this accelerator and foot pedal do the trick, and he could take up knitting if he wanted to. Late in 1935, 20 of these handsome new cars began gliding down Pennsylvania Avenue. As it has been necessary to run them on the same line with older and slower cars, passengers have yet to experience the full benefits of their speedy performance. Yet this handicap enabled the Capital Transit Company to gauge the passenger appeal of the car's other superiorities. Sleek appearance, quietness, smooth acceleration, comfortable seating. A check on a nine-block stretch of line showed that the new cars attracted an average of 19 passengers per car, while the old cars picked up only nine passengers per car. Of these results, W.E. Bennett says, they do not mean, of course, that the installation of all new streetcars would double our car riding but they speak eloquently of the tremendous appeal of the modern car. Also, they discount to no small extent deductions sometimes made to show the great desirability of the bus over the streetcar when these deductions are based on comparisons of modern buses with old streetcars. So hats off to Washington, Indianapolis, and other pioneers of modern high-speed streetcars. <laughs> Their progressiveness helped greatly to create this new antelope of the rails, the President's Conference Car, the new electric challenger of city traffic. As this first production model rolls into the streets of Brooklyn, its swift, silent performance and gleaming, streamlined appearance symbolizes the rebirth of rail transit, ready to win passengers today with the luxury transportation they will demand tomorrow. 
From its fingertip control panel to its featherweight driving motors, from its quick-as-a-wink blinker doors to its velvet smooth acceleration, it is designed to produce dividends in rail line modernization. In every large city, there are lines on which modernization with this car will pay dividends to the public in service and to the operator in dollars and cents. Traffic congestion has reached the point where it would be civic suicide not to demand the most efficient use of street space. This car will carry more passengers for the street space occupied than any other vehicle, and it will transport them through traffic faster than any other transit vehicle. It is the most efficient user of street space. With the exception of the trackless trolley coach, this car is the quietest transit vehicle ever put on the street. This quietness, combined with swift gliding acceleration, forced ventilation, abundant lighting, thermostatically controlled electric heat, and deep cushioned seats, affords comfort heretofore unknown in transit vehicles. Gone are noisy gears, banging trucks, and stiff steel springs. Instead are quiet gears running in oil, trucks built with the precision of an automobile engine, and a body that literally floats on rubber. Brake pedal and accelerator provide complete running control. The motorman's hands are free to serve his passengers quickly and efficiently. Maximum use of swift getaway and speed can be made with safety. A coordinated system of three sets of brakes enables the car to stop almost twice as fast as any other rail vehicle, yet with no danger of sliding wheels. The new floating control provides 500 steps of electric braking, permitting rapid stops with smoothness. When the traffic light says go, this car will easily outsprint trucks and hold its own with the most modern passenger automobile. Thus, it avoids delays caused by motor vehicles pulling around on the track and slowing down. In summary, here is a car that offers the finest, fastest ride of any surface vehicle today. At the same time, it preserves present useful investment and operates at low cost. And finally, because transit companies saw the wisdom of standardization, this car can be purchased for $3,000 less than the average car of equal size offered five years ago. Brooklyn, Chicago, Baltimore, Los Angeles, San Diego, and Pittsburgh have begun the march to modern rail transit with the President's Conference car. Transit companies can face the future confidently with this new electric challenger of city traffic. Rapid transit, swift mover of the million. When large cities grow to metropolitan centers and it is no longer possible to do the entire job on the surface, lightweight electric subway trains such as these provide the swiftest, safest, and most successful means of transit for trunk line operation. But, say transit men, few of us have passenger traffic that permits us to think in terms of these transit giants. True, but the future still holds real rapid transit possibilities for smaller cities. Year by year, traffic crawls more slowly and haltingly through our downtown streets. What's the answer? Well, picture for a moment the swift modern streetcars and trolley coaches running on the surface in the outlying areas where fast schedules can still be made, and then ducking down into subway tunnels beneath the crawling traffic of the business district. Had you ever thought of doing that? Yes, transportation is a business that stimulates the imagination. And during the last few years, imagination and courage have produced achievements in other fields of transportation that have also commanded the front page. Diesel electric streamliners, streaking down the New England coast or across the Nebraska prairies, they have shattered all records for rail speed without sacrificing safety. And, as in city transit, electric power has played a vital part. For without electric drive, these gleaming spearheads of transportation progress would have been impossible. By setting new standards of economy, they have won the confidence of railroad men. By setting new standards of comfort and convenience, they have won the support of the nation's travelers. And now, with the new low rail fares, the slogan, See America First, becomes an irresistible invitation. The Pennsylvania Railroad Electric swift, silent giants of the rails carrying the heaviest passenger traffic in the world. Run after run, they complete their amazingly fast schedules on time, providing all the passenger comfort afforded by electric power. A courageous investment made in the leanest years and it's paying dividends. 
Today on the high seas, two superliners are waging a thrilling contest of speed. A short time ago, the French liner Normandy sailed into New York Harbor with the shores of Europe only four days and three hours behind. A new record. But it was soon to fall to this new speed queen, the Queen Mary. Last September, her 200,000 horsepower turbines drove her into Southampton Harbor three days, 23 hours, and 57 minutes after she had sailed from New York. The Hindenburg, the largest airship ever built, the luxury liner of the skies, dwarfing our own Navy dirigible as she ties up at Lakehurst. Powered by 4,000 horsepower in diesel engines and having a cruising radius of nearly 10,000 miles, she makes non-stop flights between Central Europe and New York on regular schedule. The Douglas Airliner, racing the sun by day, the Pullman of the sky at night. Cruising at nearly 200 miles an hour, it annihilates distance between the Atlantic and the Pacific. No transportation achievement is more thrilling, more spectacular. And it is winning the confidence of the nation's travelers by proving that air travel can be safe as well as fast. Yes, in all forms of transportation, the achievements of the last few years have electrified the world. Great achievements, yes. But these new electric champions, which are now at the command of transit men, are even greater achievements. Not only are they as modern and as right as the streamlined trains, the speed queens of the sea, or the transport airliners, but they even greater advances over the old than any of these. They offer cities the opportunity to build soundly for the future and to give you a new standard for public service that will win and hold new patronage. They are a golden opportunity. Thank <laughs> you.